Hi, we are Communication Ventures ATC. The mission is to provide fast and effective solutions for the workplace problems and situations. I'm Amanda. I'm Logan. I'm Ann. I'm Ashley. I'm Ben. Gender con conflict can be as far as giving slash sharing information, making decisions and giving orders, and handling conflict. Gender con conflict can cause stress, productivity issues, and low morals. Hey Ben. Hey Logan. Hey. Hey. Can you guys have the ice houses for me today? Yeah, of course. Man, I hate taking orders from her. I think I should be managing the sporting goods department. It's a man's job anyway. Oh, I know. It, it's who, who has a woman as a, as a manager? It yeah. doesn't make any sense. Hey, you know Amanda does a really good job running the sporting goods department. She's a lot better than I thought she would. Yeah, she knows her stuff. Respect is a basic human right. It is also a company value. Employees, customers, vendors, everyone deserves respect. Sexual harassment is disrespect. Sexual harassment consists of unwelcome conduct, either verbal or physical, that is based on characteristics determined by law. Unwelcomed means that you find it offensive or it makes you feel uncomfortable. The company will not tolerate sexual directed behavior that affects employment conditions, interferes with work performance, or creates an intimidating, offensive, or hostile work environment. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate acceptable communication skills to avoid sexual harassment. Hey Linda, you're doing a great job. Hey, thanks Steve. Might want to try dressing a little bit sexier though. It is your job we're talking about after all. Excuse me? Hey Linda, you're doing a great job. Well, thanks Steve. Your report in the meeting today was really great. I did a lot of verification to make sure the forecasting was accurate. I expect you might be in line for the next team lead position. I'm glad I work with you. Hey, Logan. Hey, what's up? You remember to fill out those work orders? Yes, I did. Well, you remember to do everything on it? Because last week you didn't. Well, I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. You know, I, I don't understand. You know I've been doing this for almost 10 years, and you ride my butt all the time. I just want to double check and make sure you're doing all, all the work you need to do because you're costing us money. So, Logan, what? brings you to human resources. This must be bothering you quite a bit. Well, I'm having issues. The my supervisor just writing writing me like like I don't know what I'm doing. I I've been technician for ten years and, and I know what I'm doing. I'm human, I make mistakes just like she does. I don't okay. understand why she has to constantly micromanage me. Okay, so she what I'm hearing is that she's writing you in regards to the details for every single work order. Yeah. What if we were to say have her back off and let you complete the work order first and then she can review it after you fill it out? Would that be a solution that would maybe work for you then? Yeah, that'd work. All right. Let's try that for a while and then we'll meet again and see if things aren't improving. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Thanks. In this skit, you'll learn how to diffuse an upset customer. By listening to them and hearing the issue they have with your company, you'll be able to come to a fair solution for both the consumer and the retail court. Hello, welcome to Coles. How can I help you today? I am pissed off. Came in here last week, I bought a couple of things, I got my bank statement today, and you guys charged me twice. You need to fix it, you need to fix it now. I'm so sorry about that. Let me just see what I can do to help you. Hurry up, I don't have all day. Just a moment, I'll get a manager up here for you. We need a service manager to the service station. Thank you. What can I do to help you today? Well, he was in here last week and bought some items, and he said that he was charged twice, but yeah. only had one transaction, so. I'm sorry, that's really strange. I've never heard of that happening before. Did you bring back a bank statement to prove that you were charged twice? No, I shouldn't have to. I brought my receipt. Can't you just fix it off of that? No, sir. I'm sorry. I need proof that your account was indeed charged twice. <sighs> it's on the car. I'll be back. Here's that bank statement that you had to have. Well, welcome back. Now let me see what I can do to get this transaction back to your account. I've never seen this happen in 13 years. Give me one second. I have refunded your account and everything is squared away. Is there anything else I can do for you today? No, thanks for getting that taken care of. Not a problem. How often have you received a sloppy, irrelevant, or unprofessional email? How many times have you sent one? Proper email etiquette is a must for any professional in the workplace today. 
whether it's an intra-organization email or co correspondence with a customer, how you present yourself in electronic communications can make or break a career. You should be using your business email address for just that, business. No jokes, no chain letters, no forwards. You should have a professional sounding email address that gives some indication of who you are. No more whiskey jake 456 at drinksalot.com. Make yourself sound like the mature professional you are. Your customers are more likely to trust you. Your subject line should, should be short and to the point of the email, and your message should follow along with your subject line. Whether or not your message gets read depends a lot on the subject line, so don't leave it blank. Use proper professional salutations, not hey or what's up, but hi or hello are much better. And to sign off, don't use later. Regards or sincerely works much better. Be sure to use the recipient's formal name, use Jennifer, not Jenny, unless you know them personally and have told you that they prefer that name. Two from carbon copy and blind carbon copy. Use these lines appropriately. In the two line, be sure to include the formal name of the person you are messaging as well as their email address. Type John B. Doe, capitalizing John, the middle initial, and the last name, not all lowercase and not all uppercase. Same with the from line. All caps or no caps gives the impression of uneducated or immature. Use carbon copy when you have a group of familiar contacts that need to be on the same page. Use blind carbon copy with groups of unfamiliar contacts who may not want their information shared with the whole group. Do not use blind carbon copy to go above and over an associate's head with issues that don't concern outside sources. Be careful of the reply all button. Does everyone really need to see your reply or just one or two of them? Be considerate of others' time and inbox space and don't reply all if all do not need to see it. Exclamations and humor. These should be used sparingly. Exclamations can be used to show excitement, but use only one. Using a string of exclamations shows immaturity. Humor can be lost in translation because the reader only has your words to interpret the message and none of the body language and voice tones that would indicate humor in a face-to-face -face conversation. Proofread your emails, not just scan, but proofread them out loud if possible. Spelling and grammar mistakes make you look sloppy, uneducated, and unprofessional at best. You could send the wrong information at worst. Don't rely on spell checkers either. Type the recipient last. That way, if you have not proofed read or are not finished, you don't send the message in error. Only add the recipient after you have proofread and are satisfied with your message. In this skit, you'll be shown an example of how to address an issue that has been bothering you. If you can't resolve it on your own, you can bring it to your supervisor's attention through mediation. What are you doing, Christine? Oh, I'm just getting some work done. But that's my responsibility. I just thought I could take over the duty. No, I want to continue doing that. That's my job. I just don't feel like you do a good enough job at these things. And you have a lot on your plate. I do a fine job at completing all my tasks. So go worry about your own responsibilities. No, I don't have to. You're not the supervisor. You don't have what to say. Whatever, Christine. Hey, Bill, do you have a minute, you know, that we could talk? About yeah, something? sure, yeah. What's up? Well, I've noticed Christine doing some of my responsibilities, and it's really bothering me because I feel that I'm fully capable of handling my own job. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring both into my office later today, and we'll talk about what each of your responsibilities are. You do your job, she'll do hers. Okay, that works. Thank you. Christine, like I told you earlier, I'm fully capable of handling all of my responsibilities. I don't need your help. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't expect you to take it to heart. If you really want me to stop, I will. Yes, I do want you to stop. All right. In the meantime, I made a list for both of you for each of your job responsibilities and what I want you to do. Each stick to your own job. Sound fair? Yes, sir. Yep, that's fair. And I didn't mean to step on Jan's toes. All right. Now that we have the responsibilities established, we should be back to normal. Either you have any problems, you know where to find me. Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks. Nonverbal and verbal com communication is to enhance communication around the clock. Oh, I can't wait to get home. It's been such a long day. I know. I feel the same way. Hey, just to let you know, we're still only eating about 25% for lunch. Howard's kind of seems edgy today. Otherwise, today's been pretty good. 
All right, great. Thank you. I will make sure I give them both a double check. Thanks. Have, Have a good, good night. night. You too.